Madam President, uh, some of my remarks will be uh, duplicative of Senator Hatch and, uh, and the Senator from Florida, as I've indicated. But I want to really stress on behalf of our nation's farmers, ranchers, and manufacturers, service providers, I rise today to add my voice uh, to the chorus of strong support for passing the pending trade agreements with Colombia, Panama, and Korea. Uh, now, to be candid with you, and I'm not trying to be a bad news bear here, but uh, I wasn't at all convinced this day would ever come. But after learning that the President was sending up the trade agreements uh, to Congress, uh, I think the word I thought of in my head was finally, maybe five finally, 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 because it's been five years, five years that uh, the U.S. trade agenda has been put on hold. And quite frankly, I think hostage to demands by certain environmental groups, uh, labor, uh, a rewrite of the trade assistance. But yesterday, under the uh, perseverance of the chairman, uh, Senator Baucus, and others on the committee, finally, the Senate Finance Committee uh, did pass the uh, trade agreements. We had a markup. It was amidst uh, protesters. Uh, it was quite a uh, not a unique uh, situation, but one that uh, the chairman handled very deftly. I would call to the attention of members in regards to their interest in the trade agreements, if they have any possible uh, concerns. Uh, read the remarks by uh, Senator Hatch and by the chairman, by Senator Crapo, Senator Wyden, and Senator Kerry, uh, more especially Senator Wyden, who got a little static uh, from the audience uh, undeservedly. The good news, the pending trade agreements uh, add up to $13 billion in additional exports. That's estimated 250,000 jobs. That's estimated by the American Chamber of Commerce. Just a few big picture highlights right now. Korea imposes an average, um, a 54% tariff for agriculture products. Within three years after implementation, 95% of these tariffs drop off with the most zeroing out after a decade for beef producers, and that's a big thing for Kansas, that means the 40% tariff on beef products will be phased out over 15 years. Around 75% of the ag and non-ag exports entering Colombia will be duty-free upon the implementation of the agreement. Duties on many other tariff lines will be phased out over a five to 10 year period. Panama, while reducing import duties is important, the expansion of the Panama Canal is not only an important project for U.S. bidders, it is a geographical key for international commerce, transportation, and security, security for the region. But just from the agriculture perspective, just for the Aggies, the three pending trade agreements represent a $2.5 billion upon full implementation in regards to exports, more than 22,000 jobs. The Kansas Farm Bureau estimates that the three agreements in total are expected to increase direct exports by $130 million for Kansas ag producers and an additional 1,150 jobs. Finally, these trade agreements will help put American workers and exporters on a level playing field with our competitors and hopefully, 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 a tough job, regain lost market share. Now, let me emphasize really emphasize, in the case of two of these agreements, Panama and Colombia, under normal condition, their exports already have duty-free access to the U.S. market. The pending agreements merely create a two-way trade and allow U.S. exporters the same treatment which we already grant their countries. It makes one wonder what all the fuss was about. And the fuss, the five-year fuss and delay, hurt us, not them, and that's the, uh, that's the point that I think everybody should finally discern. But five years, uh, three years under this administration, uh, the goalposts continued to shift and action was delayed indefinitely. Two years under the, pre under the previous administration, basically with objections by the House of Representatives. As a consequence, U.S. producers and exporters lost market share to our competitors. Let me give you an example. Over the past two years, U.S. wheat producers have already lost market share to Argentina, which receives preferential trade 
uh, treatment based on a regional trade agreement. Just two years, the U.S. share of the Colombian uh, wheat market dropped by 30 percent, including corn and soybeans. The lost market share jumps to 57 percent. In addition, the largest food processor in Colombia, Nutrasia, announced shortly after the Canada-Colombia uh, trade agreement went into effect that they were sourcing all of their wheat purchases from Canada, accounting for half of all of the wheat imports. Previously, U.S. wheat growers were the largest uh, suppliers of wheat in Colombia. In July, the uh, Korea-European Union trade agreement, not U.S. agreement, European Union agreement went into effect. And within the first month, according to the uh, Korean customs, the European Union exports are up 34 percent. That's lost market share going to the European Union, not the United States. Notably, aerospace equipment increased a whopping 1,693 percent. You can see where that is going. Kansas is a major player in the aviation sector. We export 2.7 billion in transportation equipment last year. But with the European Union agreement, why, you can see what happens with lost market share. Finally, with regard uh, 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 the United States uh, to, uh, to future trade and in trade in general, uh, the United States must be trusted to stand by its word. Word, you know, trust in your word in trade uh, means everything. The dithering on these trade agreements has not been lost on our trade partners or the world at large. It's just not economic growth and job creation we gambled with here. All the back and forth and increased demands on our part calls into question our integrity. Is the United States a dependable partner and ally? Now, as the former chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, I'm quite familiar with who is a friend to the United States and who is not. In the 31 countries and 10 territories that make up the Southern Command, there is a growing sense of anti-Americanism. Venezuela's President Hugo Chavez is a perfect example. A decade ago, why Colombia was essentially a failed state, suffering from a war waged between the guerrilla groups and the paramilitary groups, the FARC and the ELN, much has changed, much, much has changed over 10 years under the leadership of then President Uribe and continued by President Santos. An amazing job. U.S. support during this time has helped to establish a strong relationship and form a key ally in an increasingly hostile area. So strengthening our economic relationship just makes sense. Uh, the unjustified delay on our part is not only embarrassing, it has potentially damaged our credibility, in my view. As Kansans and the rest of our nation continue this slow and bumpy climb out of these tough economic times, we must do all that we can to foster economic growth. Opening foreign markets to U.S. goods, services, and agriculture is an obvious and long overdue part of the solution. But we can't stop with passing these three trade agreements, pat ourselves on the back and call it a day. I assure you that our foreign competitors are not stopping. In fact, Madam Chairman, it's been reported that there are approximately 100 trade agreements being negotiated right now, give or take, that do not include the United States. 100. We, the United States, we're negotiating one initiated in the waning days of the Bush administration, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP. The TPP provides critical access to the ever-growing Asia-Pacific region and has the potential to include other countries later in the future. While negotiations continue, there will soon come to a point when talks will stall because the U.S. negotiators' hands are tied without the protection of Trade Promotion Authority or Fast Track as some uh, refer to it. Without TPA, why negotiating countries will have little reason to negotiate, much less make any difficult uh, concessions, until they know that the U.S. is serious. Fast Track provides the substance to these talks. So why is TPA not a priority? Uh, I am concerned that as the administration quietly defers on seeking trade uh, promotion authority, why negotiators will be unable to negotiate and trade will take a back seat once again. A signal may well be, and I hope this is not true, uh, that these trade agreements will be the last under the current administration. 
Now, let me get off the bad news bear stuff and the stubborn facts and facts are stubborn things and the five-year delay. Let me give credit to the President for finally, yes, finally, sending these trade agreements to Congress, but let's not become pacified in the long overdue action. In order to stay competitive with our foreign partners, we need to stay in the game. And Madam President, I yield back.